What's up everybody? I'm back for another video in series I'm doing sharing updates uh, to my website. So uh, I'm doing this just to kind of share learnings, share my process and so on. So today's episode is going to talk about digital gardens. So you may have heard the term um, digital gardens is sort of this concept and it has a few other names like mind gardens and things like that or working notes. Um, it's an idea where you basically um, start sharing a lot of the notes that you're taking or at least some of the notes that you're taking publicly and the goal behind that is to kind of get feedback and so on and so forth so um, today I'm going to talk about a few different things so first I'm going to talk about why did I decide to build a digital garden um, I launched this um, this digital digital garden that I just built uh, I want to say like five months ago or maybe a few months ago I don't know Something like that. I've had some struggles with it, so I want to talk about that. And I also have found a slightly sort of different way that I want to use it that's giving me a little bit more motivation for it. And I'm going to talk about the website that I have for it and how I'm integrating it back into my main site and why I'm doing that. So let's get into it. So first, um, this is my digital garden. It's at notes.salmon.io. And I started out kind of doing what I thought digital gardens were primarily meant for, which is kind of sharing these sort of evergreen notes. You know, sometimes a lot of them are, are often smaller than this. Um, and you sort of create these, ide these ideas and put them out there. And, and, you know, by creating a website like this, you can kind of hyperlink and connect to them and, and you can have sort of backlinks and, and stuff like that for any references. So this is a list of every place that references this particular note. Um, and you know i really liked it in the beginning but to be honest i found it quite difficult to uh contribute to my own digital garden regularly so i already take a lot of notes in rome i don't feel like i want to put a lot of those out here um not really from a like not wanting to share perspective but more just uh i think they need to have a lot of a lot more polish for me to feel like i want to put them on a site and, and, and kind of have them be publicly consumed and in addition to just sort of writing a weekly newsletter, or writing essays, you know, being on Twitter, or making videos like this, um, I honestly just wasn't finding the time for it. So my garden started to kind of just sit there. And recently I had an idea um, for two sort of ways that I can use a digital garden that I think are a little bit more relevant to me and can bring a little bit more um, activity back. So the first one is I have a, a newsletter that I publish weekly and um, you know I uh, whenever I'm uh, you know writing this newsletter I have these little sections um, you know they're sort of different ideas that are part of that newsletter. Um, so you know usually they're kind of disparate and what I realized was these would actually make really great notes. Um, and so one thing that I've started to do is sort of go back and turn some of these into notes. So I had this idea, I talked about a newsletter called Flipping the Script, which basically means, um, you know, not just looking at platform metrics like subscribers and followers and stuff, but actually like, um, you know, rethinking it to be like, what, what does it mean to you? And I mean, this is kind of a longer note than, than I would like. I probably want to break these into sub notes, but you know, and then eventually could turn this into an essay. But what I like about notes is like, it gets me to feel a little bit more free. So I can just like say, okay, here's what I said about it. Here's a note, just put the note up. And what's valuable for me is being able to link to it. So a lot of times I'm on Twitter and I'm talking about that idea. And normally what would have happened is I would say, oh yeah, I'm like working on an essay on this, you know? And it just sort of never comes out or, or I'm I just work on other things. And so what's good about a note is you can just put it up. It's really low pressure and then you can link to that idea. Um, and so that's one use case that I think I'm going to sort of employ a lot more of is taking, um, you know, taking some notes from my newsletter. So I'm going to be going back through some of the older editions and uh, turning those into notes. And that's actually really important because right now I've got my newsletter on Substack. And to be honest, I don't really think that um, folks are gonna be sitting and like, you know, browsing through the whole archive, you know? Um, I think that most folks will 
check out a newsletter if they're subscribed. Maybe they'll see one if they're linked to it, but I don't really think people are going through all newsletters archives, right? And like browsing through them. So I feel like if there's a unique idea in a newsletter that I express, I don't want it to get lost. I kind of want it to try and turn it into an asset that, that kind of, you know, an idea that I can reference later or help build other ideas. And, um, you know, I think notes are a good way to do that. The second approach or the second use case I think is really valuable is sharing process. So I've started to, you know, little ideas I have around writing, um, you know, how I read newsletters, flipping the script, like peeling the onion, which is an idea that I kind of think about, uh, I phrase it as peeling the onion because I think a lot of times I think of writing as like, you're just sort of removing layers. And so sometimes what we write, it doesn't really matter. It's just about getting it out of the way and making, uh, making room for what comes next. So, you know, I think these kind of little like process learnings that I have, um, you know, I started to, to add them. And I think, you know, eventually it'll start to kind of compile up into a sort of personal writing process guide, which is, which is kind of cool. You know, you might be able to, I might be able to turn that into something later on. Uh, so those are the two use cases. Now, uh, let's talk about the last thing um, on today's agenda. So we've talked about why I built it, some struggles I had, and some new use cases. So um, I realized recently that one thing I'm not super happy about is if you go to my website, um, you know, you can go the front page of the websites here, um, the about page, which is a change I made recently. So now someone.io goes straight to the home page. Feel pretty good about how concise this is. I the previous video talked about some edits I made to this. Um, you know, you can click on blog and you can see all my essays here. It feels nice. But then if you click on notes, uh, it's going to take you to this other website. And you know, that's not that's not great. It's not the end of the world, but I'm not happy about it because I just feel like it sort of disrupts the user experience a little bit. I feel like they should be able to navigate everything here in this one website. The other thing is, um, it still sort of contributes to SEO because I've got it as a subdomain here, but you know, this separate site actually has its own configuration. So this website is actually built in um, a technology called Gatsby, whereas my personal website is built in something else called Hugo. So, you know, I've got two different websites I'm maintaining. I'm contributing to them different ways. I'm, you know, then I'm gonna have to worry about SEO in different ways and things like that. So frankly, I just felt like it's not really worth all this effort. Um, and I decided I'm just going to take these notes and integrate them back uh, into my main website. Now, that might seem like um, kind of a, you know, a sort of, I guess, cumbersome exercise, um, but thankfully, I've been doing everything in Markdown. So my blog, my essays, you know, every, all the text here on this website, all these pages, as well as the notes are all written in Markdown. Um, and both websites just kind of interpret Markdown. So it was really a matter of copying over Markdown files into this site and doing a bunch of other tweaks. So this is what it kind of looks like now. Um, if I go to uh, notes here, instead of taking another site, I've integrated it here. And so you can see the styles um, now match. And um, it really wasn't that much work to, to bring this over, but I think the real advantage is um, not just in sort of like how uh, immersed it is now inside this website, but also in the editing experience. So because I have uh, a bunch of markdown files, essentially that power this, I can use any editor to edit the markdown files locally. So what I've decided to use uh, is a tool called Obsidian, which is a related but different tool from uh, Rome Research, if you're familiar with that for note taking. Uh, it looks like this. Um, and so basically here I've got, you can actually open a folder of markdown files as your vault for Obsidian. It doesn't have to be like its own set of notes. And so what's cool about that is I've got now this folder here with my content and it's got notes, which are, um, you know, all here in, uh, in Markdown. And then I've got my blog, which all my essays are here. And so it's pretty seamless. Um, you know, I can go from editing a note and making a quick change to that to editing an essay and publishing it. And it's all kind of in the same repository. And that's really important to me because I want to make sure that it's as easy as possible to add and publish content 
um because you know i'll always come up with some excuse not to <laughs> not to actually publish something um so you know this is really important so for example um i just added uh, a note here this is on localhost meaning i've got it running locally i added a note here today um just now actually before the video to just list out some of these um you know these videos that i've been making so this one is the first one and this one i will update with a link to this video once i publish it so yeah i feel uh, a lot better about kind of the overall um workflow okay i just realized i was not sharing the right thing but here is what i was trying to show you is uh this is the note that i've added uh at the front page here that um that shows you those videos so um as you can see, it's kind of like immersed uh, and it feels really good. I still have some other things like my newsletter and my art page, which take you to Substack and Instagram respectively. I would like to integrate my newsletter landing page. So I just kind of show my, you know, best editions and a subscribe uh, box. And, you know, for my art, it could be a gallery as well. Like, I do feel like it's good to have those separate um, sites because, you know, Substack provides a lot of value and, and I'm sure whatever newsletter service I end up using will, will always have something like that. Um, but, you know, as much as possible, I think it's good to have folks stay in site and that way I can start to optimize SEO. So those are some of the things I'm thinking about next are like, how can I integrate, uh, I wanna integrate a landing page for this as well as maybe for my art um working more on seo and then you know i do have some ideas around how to make the site a little bit more fun so one of the things that's great about markdown publishing is that it's super easy to write content you can just you know do it like this but it does mean that your site ends up being pretty text heavy and for someone like me who does also do a lot of illustrations and things like that you know i do want to add a little bit of animation and, and color and and so on and uh, it's really not that easy to do when most of the content is uh, a markdown file. So I have some thoughts on that, but um, that will probably come in a future edition. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.